If you think your home is built to last, just wait till you've seen the construction kings of the natural world. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme animal architects and comparing them to our own crazy creations. Discover the best laid plans of mice and men when home improvement is taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. Once upon a time, we called a cave our home. But as our ambition and ingenuity grew, we created bigger and better structures until now the sky's the limit. With enough time and money, we can create strange homes out of almost anything. But nobody will ever build a house like our first contender. As the sun goes down on the reef, it's time for the parrotfish to create a new home. It's number 10 in the countdown because it builds a house out of snot. This designer sleeping bag is made from mucus secreted from glands in its skin. It sounds disgusting, but this slimy sack seals in the parrotfish's smell. This is really important when there are hunters that can sniff out the scent of unprotected sleeping fish. Having survived the dangers of the night, parrotfish are free to feed on the polyps that create stony coral. And when you chew on rock, you poo out sand. Lots of sand. Each year, just one parrotfish can produce a ton of coral sand. Getting your hands dirty in a pile of parrotfish droppings is the dream of many young home designers. And it's not all child's play. Some designers take sandcastles to the extreme. This incredible design in Zeebrugge, Belgium is one of the biggest sand sculptures in Europe. Hundreds of hours are spent watering and compacting the sand so it can be carved into incredible shapes. The parrotfish doesn't put such effort into building its temporary accommodation. After all, just how hard is it to make a large sack out of a giant booger? And that's why the parrotfish is only number 10 in our countdown of home designers. Our next contender takes home improvements to the extreme. It's an obsessive compulsive that never stops fiddling with the decorations, adding a piece here, changing something over there. No wonder it's called the decorator crab. It's number nine in the countdown because no other animal takes such care of its mobile home. 
It comes equipped with a tool belt of handy pincers for trimming pieces of plant life and then fastening them onto the tiny hairs on its legs and back. Just like Velcro, the chewed ends of the seaweed stick on to the hook-like body hairs. But what makes the crab really extreme is that whenever it goes for a walk, it completely renovates its house. While most crabs prefer to keep well away from predators, the decorator crab lives out in the open. This master of camouflage quickly blends into its new environment simply by collecting odds and ends left lying around the seafloor. One woman also turned a collection of odds and ends into an incredible home. This is Grandma Prisby of Simi Valley, California. By 1956, she'd managed to collect over 17,000 pencils and, at the age of 61, decided it was time to design a house to store them all. The first thing to do was find building materials. So, just like a decorator crab, she started collecting odds and ends that had been left lying around. Her favorite building materials were bottles, and after 25 years of serious collecting, Grandma Prisby had designed something astonishing. This isn't a house, but a village. Grandma Prisby's bottle village consisted of 13 buildings and 22 sculptures, including wishing wells, shrines, and walkways. She claimed to have incorporated more than a million bottles in her designs. At the heart of the complex was the building that started it all, a home for her collection of pencils. Grandma Prisby died in 1988, but much of her extraordinary creation still survives today. The designs of the decorator crab are far more temporary. It's only number nine in the countdown, because whenever it gets hungry, it can remove a piece from its back and eat it. Our countdown of extreme home designers continues with a house that's good enough to eat. This house was designed by a witch to lure Hansel and Gretel to their deaths. Candy and cake may be the perfect building material for human children lost in a dark forest. But there's nothing sweet about the home of our next contender. It's perfectly happy, strolling through dark forests and deserted graveyards. Crawling in to number eight in the countdown is the burying beetle. It's looking for a house that would make Hansel and Gretel sick. A dead mouse is prime real estate. And if it's crawling with mites and covered in fly eggs, so much the better. It'll be a babe magnet, attracting any female in the vicinity. Once a pair of beetles have made it, they'll start work on designing the nursery. The first task is to cover the carcass in saliva and feces to slow down the rotting process. Then, they have to move something 200 times their own weight. By lying on their backs, they can balance the body above them, walking the load along as if on a conveyor belt. It's easy to see how burying beetles got their name. An hour later, the corpse is in the crypt. The burying beetle is number eight in the countdown because it can turn a rotting body into a nursery for its babies. Thanks to a liberal coating of spit and anal secretions, 
The proud parents have a home that's good enough to eat. A little regurgitated mouse carcass goes a long way for a baby burying beetle. But burying beetles are not the only builders that can make a home out of unusual materials. In fact, some designers are so enthusiastic about trash that they dive into their work head first. Dumpster diving may not be everyone's idea of fun, but it can uncover enough material to furnish any home, according to John Starnes of Tampa, Florida. John calls his hobby pre-cycling. For 30 years, he's been turning other people's garbage into a house that's a work of art. Well, if anybody thought I was living in a pile of trash, I think it's a beautiful pile of trash. I mean, just look around, it's colorful, it's symmetrical, it's interesting. Um, you just don't bring home any old thing from the trash and call it home decor. As it took three years for this couch to evolve into this look by selectively scavenging things. Uh, the space coffee table, that's evolved over two years. So just by being selective in what you bring home and what you do with it, you can avoid a, a trashy look. While John Starnes might have a talent for turning trash into art, it's difficult to compete with a burying beetle that can turn a dead body into a nursery. For most people, the tasteful designs of this animal architect are best left hidden underground. 